One of the most controversial comments or topics you can ask anybody in InfoSec is whether or not if you need to know how to code in order to break into cybersecurity. So by the end of this video, hopefully I give you a better understanding of how to answer that question. And if you do end up wanting to learn how to code, what programming languages to use. And of course, I'm going to give you my hot take on it at the end. But before we do that, drop me a comment. Let me know. Do you currently know how to code? And if you are in cybersecurity, does that help you with your day to day? But before we answer that question, I think it's really important for us to understand the difference between programming and scripting. And those two are very different. And that makes a huge difference in what you want to do when it comes down to cybersecurity. So when it comes down to programming, those are your, your C, C++, Rust. These are the programming languages that take a lot more thought and a lot more time in order to develop things. And a lot of times people that learn how to do programming, quote unquote, it's because they want to do things like binary exploitation or be able to do stuff on the kernel, like a Linux kernel. And it just helps communicate better with computers versus with scripting. You're just learning how to manipulate tasks or even just learn how to automate a task so you don't have to do it a million times. And I'll give you an example of scripting later down in the video, but I also want to help you hear from some other people other than myself that are in cybersecurity. So every Sunday, I host a live stream where I bring on guests and I ask them this very same question. So let's hear what Ipsic had to say when I asked him, hey, do you think coding is required for hacking? I don't think it's required to get into hacking, but I do think coding is should be required for life. <laughs> like there's so yes. many professions that could benefit from coding. I think this was like two months ago, like the Hack the Box blog. I didn't like it not being camel case on the titles of the blog post, which is a really, really small thing, right? Yeah. But mm. I got a marketing person to kind of agree to, and that's who kind of ran the blog beforehand. But she was like, it's too much work to change everything in error prone to change that, <laughs> right? And I was like, no, this is like the edit button is sequential in numbers. So I can just like get this page, do a quick like Python thing on this title, replace it, post, get the next ID. Like it was five minutes of work in Python to change it. And there was a library that did it for me. So I didn't have to worry about like not camel case in the word and. So many jobs I think could benefit from basic coding knowledge. Maybe in that question, I would say programming is not needed, but scripting is. I find that to mm. be a slight difference. But in order to get into hacking, you can do it without it. I think if you just are on the computer enough, um, scripting is going to make your life easier. I think for people that are watching, what is the difference between scripting and programming? People that don't know and they want to get into this. Yeah. So when I think of programming, I think of um, the more complicated, like Rust, C++, like oh, those Rust. languages that actually require a lot of thought and like the optimal languages, right? I guess Java is also considered programming, but not optimal, but that's a whole different story. <laughs> but like the languages like Python, I consider scripting because anyone can pick that up. Like yeah. I bet I can like show a Python script to someone that doesn't know what programming is. And they'd be like, oh, that says print hello world. It's probably going to print hello world to screen instead <laughs> of like this whole like C out with double bracket. Like it's much more easier to read. Right. And honestly, I think he had a very good way of putting it to say coding isn't a requirement, at least for the basics and a lot of the cybersecurity job like pen testing, bug bounty hunting, and maybe a security analyst. But it just in general in life, it makes a lot of sense if you know how to do these things. And obviously, you can go watch his live interview on my channel. I'll put it down in the description. But that's what he had to say. I also sat down with Ode, and he was also on the stream a while ago. Asked him the same question. He also gave a similar answer, but he talked more in depth about what you should learn exactly. So let's roll the clip real quick and see what he had to say. But you know, knowing the basics and knowing how to Google what you're looking at is enough. So I would say you do not need to be a programmer, but I'd, re I'd recommend learning the request library in many languages, learning how to do a loop, learn how to write a function and how to use print. And if you can do all them things in a couple of languages, you should be good to go in my opinion. Did you hear that? A lot of the things that he said was learning the basics, understanding what is it that you're looking at and how to look for it through Google and how to be able to make sense of it. And he also mentioned things like functions, different types of loops, and being able to use Python, for example, in order to make 
HTTP request. And I think going back to what we just discussed, a lot of people confuse programming and scripting, and that's when things get confusing and kind of scary because I don't want to become a full stack developer in order to jump into cybersecurity because that's just a lot of time and effort. And I understand it has its own benefits, but it just seems like it's a lot of efforts being wasted on doing things that you may not even need to use. So personally for me, I call myself a scripter. I do a lot of more scripting because a lot of the pen test and bug bounty hunting that I do just relies on me automating tasks. So for example, if I want to run the same command on a thousand domains, I don't want to sit there and type that same command a thousand times to get the outputs. Instead, I'm going to sit down and write five lines of code that goes through a loop, gets a list of every single domain, pass it into a function, another tool, and again, gets the output for me and prints it out. So the difference between doing those two is typing same thing a thousand times, which could take me hours at a time versus just running a few lines of code and making my life easier. But that just mostly talks about getting into hacking, getting into cybersecurity. If you're just breaking into cybersecurity, this is great. Learn how to do scripting and eventually get into the things that you want to learn and learn more programming languages. And obviously that just covers breaking into cybersecurity. And I don't want to say that you fully don't need coding at all to break into cybersecurity because you, in some cases you actually do. So for example, if you're trying to get into binary exploitation or you want to do things on the Linux kernel, you want to be able to exploit it and find vulnerabilities within it, it takes a lot of more effort and you have to go learn those programming languages. Also, the other one is looking at security research. For example, if you want to find vulnerabilities within an open source tool that's being used on millions of websites. So if you want to find flaws of vulnerabilities and something that's wildly used, then it's going to take a lot more than just knowing how to script and you're going to hit a dead end if you're not picking up other programming languages. So if you're new and you want to break into cybersecurity, whether you're doing a change in your career, you're in college, you just want to do something new, here's what I would do personally. One, learn Bash or PowerShell. Personally, I prefer Bash, but really understand how Bash works and now the different things you can do. Learn functions, learn how the different loops work, what are the different types of loops and how you can use them. So for example, one of the things you can do is learn how to manipulate data. How do you look for certain characters? How do you remove them? How do you add lines? Those kinds of things. And also go a step further, create different functions and learn how to pass data from one end to another, or even use different tools and pass the output of one tool to another. Next, you want to pick up a good scripting language that's not just Bash or PowerShell. People typically go through Python for this. It's wildly used for a lot of different things. And the reason why I recommend Python is that one, they have a ton of different libraries that could help you do a lot of different cool things. Like example that you heard from Oday, there is the libraries that you can make HTTP requests, manipulate that data and store it. But you also can see Python being used in a lot of different web frameworks. So if you want to get into web hacking, web pen testing, or web design, it also helps you get a leg on it and you learn a programming language that could be used for a lot of variety of things. So once you've learned your bash, learn Python, and then pick up JavaScript. I personally recommend JavaScript to a lot of people because a lot of times people want to get into pen testing, web hacking, and that sort of stuff. And my background with bug bounty hunting and being a web pen tester has helped learning JavaScript because it helps me understand how a website communicates or how a website really works. How does it take your data? How does it work to fetch data for different users, for your user? And how does it just keep going back and forth with different services and the different things that you have to do when it comes down to a website? So JavaScript is really helpful, especially if you're going to get in web hacking. I highly recommend it. So those are the three that I recommended so far. There are also your C or Rust, for example. Rust could also be replaced with Python. It's a lot harder to learn Rust than it is with Python, but Rust could also be something you use for scripting, but you can do a lot of higher things or better things that just, you know, it's programming more than scripting. And then last but not least, C. I've mentioned C a lot of times. Mm -hmm. Those interact with your operating systems. A lot of operating systems are built on C. So if you want to get ahead, you want to do more than just the entry-level jobs and you want to get into cybersecurity, you want to get into cybersecurity research, I really recommend picking up something like C, Rust, or even PHP, which is a debate that whether you want to consider it as a programming language now, even though you can create websites with. So that's it. Uh, I think the short answer and the hot take on it for me personally is that you don't need to know how to really write code at a deep level, 
but it just really helps if you understand how things work. So if you can't make sense of something, especially when it comes to the hacking, it's going to be a lot harder to get ahead. You're going to rely on asking help for other people or just hitting a dead end where you really can't figure things out. So go ahead, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you want me to make a more in-depth video on different programming language for cybersecurity. And also let me know if this is helpful and whether or not you're going to pick up a programming language and which one it is. All right, that's it. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and I will see you all in the next video. Peace.